Hey fellow music fans, welcome back to Psychology of Rock. If you're new here, my name's Nina, and today we're going to be doing another deep dive into the band Tool through the lens of Carl Jung's psychology and taking a look at one of my favorite tracks from Lateralis, which is Reflection. It's really kind of a haunting song. It's got emotional lyrics and very intricate melodies. And like most songs by Tool, I also think it is incredibly profound. I'll go ahead and link it down below just in case you haven't heard it, but I'm going to assume for now that you are at least somewhat familiar with the song. And I have to give the huge disclaimer that there are many different meanings that we can give to songs. And unless an artist tells us directly what they are trying to communicate, a lot is going to be up for interpretation. So keep in mind that this is only my personal analysis and that many tool songs do tend to have multiple meanings. So that being said, I think that reflection represents part of the journey that the protagonist is going through in the album Lateralis. If if it is indeed from the perspective of the same person. Reflection appears more towards the end of the album and at the beginning of the album and towards the middle, we see a lot of songs about inner struggles, spiritual growth and development, self-knowledge, and then finally, at least some hints of self-acceptance. By the time we get to the song Reflection, we see that the character is seemingly starting to embrace himself, but is now starting to struggle with his ego and is also still separated from what Carl Jung referred to as the self. And I think if we look at these terms through the perspective of Jungian psychology, it does help to paint a picture of what the song is really discussing. So by ego, we're really talking about the conscious mind, the part of the psyche that is aware of itself and the world around it. The self, on the other hand, is the totality of our psyche, including our unconscious mind. Now, according to Jungian theory, it's the ego that is the center of our consciousness and is responsible for our sense of identity. It's through the ego that we experience the world and interact with other people. The self, however, is a much more mysterious concept. It's often associated with the archetype of the mandala, which is a symbol that represents unity and wholeness. So we can think of the self as the guiding principle of the psyche that represents our potential for wholeness and for fulfillment. Now to me, I think we see a lot of evidence that reflection is really dealing with the constant tension that exists between the ego and the self because they have very different goals and a lot of key differences. The goal Goal of the ego is to satisfy our selfish needs and desires, whereas the goal of the self is to achieve balance, harmony, and integration. So if we look at reflection, even from the first line of the song, we can see that he's talking about how he's in a dark place, that he feels empty. He describes himself as self-indulgent, defeated, and close to the end. It shows that this is something that he wants to change, that he wants to find peace and to finally heal from this egoic state. So I think that whole first verse really is all about his struggles with the ego. But I have to clarify before we move on that the ego is an important part of the psyche. It is essential for human functioning. The problem, however, and I think the song really alludes to this, is that the ego can become inflated and that can lead us to make very selfish and very destructive choices, which is why it's so important that we learn to balance the ego with the self. Now, I think the second verse is centered on the concept of the self and he uses this metaphor of the moon to show that it's an illumination for him or a form of guidance possibly given to him through the concept of the self that helps him to see his way out of the darkness. He can see he's in this oppressive place that his ego has led him into and he starts questioning this ego and the person that it has led him to believe that he is. He actually says in the lyrics that the light is not his own. And I actually found a quote by Maynard talking about this verse and exactly what he meant by these words. He said, if you look at the cycles of the moon, it starts as a thin crescent and then gradually waxes until it becomes full. Then it gradually wanes back into another crescent and then it is gone. The moon reflects sunlight like humans reflect information. We wax and wane and when we become full moons, our egos are full. We think we have this knowledge when in fact, the information we have is pure and how it reflects or shines off of us is something we take credit for as though the moon could take credit for its brightness when in fact, it is only reflecting light from the sun. We have to understand that we are egoless just like the moon is without light. It and we are simply reflectors. The ego is not responsible for the information. It can reflect information in creative ways, but the information itself is pure. 
I love this quote because it's like this little window into Maynard's brain and it really shows how well thought out and well crafted his lyrics really are in all three of his bands. But moving on with reflection, this new consciousness seems to inspire the protagonist to make changes and to follow the guidance he's been given through the secret that the moon tells him. He says, don't want to be down here soothing my narcissism. I must crucify the ego before it's too late. So he realizes that his inflated ego has been the path to darkness and that his self must battle the ego or as he says, crucify the ego in order to achieve wholeness, to end his suffering and to finally leave this blind and cynical place. At the end of the song, he expresses that when we overcome the ego, the light touches us and we are capable of all that is conceivable and that this process brings out hope and reason. I think overall the song is talking about what happens when we ignore the self and we indulge too often in the shallow and narcissistic parts of life that are only important to the ego, that eventually our life starts to feel empty and meaningless. I think it also shows a path towards a different outcome, which is to balance the ego with the self. This is something that Carl Jung wrote about extensively. He believed that when we effectively achieve this, we are able to live our life in accordance with our true nature and purpose and experience a lot less suffering. So those are my thoughts on reflection, but I would love to hear yours. So don't forget to leave a comment down below. Let me know your interpretation or anything that I may have missed. As always, I truly hope you enjoyed today's analysis and I will see you next week.